Hey everybody, this is Hercules Penix, founder, curator, docent, and gift shop employee of the Hercules Penix Academy of Comic Book Studies. Today we're going to continue our scholarly examination of War Against Crime, the EC comic from the late 40s. This is before the new trend when uh, EC comics kind of took off. Um, this is, uh, we're up to number four. And once again, we have a Johnny Craig cover. And this is a portent of things to come. He's allowed to sign the cover. The uh, past few issues, um, nobody was signing the art. But that became kind of a big thing of EC Comics. Part of its success is William M. Gaines recognized that each of his individual artists drawing for him were, uh, you know, selling points. Kind of built them up as little little stars, you know. I gotta say that once again, a very lackluster Johnny Craig cover. Oof, you know, not badly drawn or anything, but what's going on in this cover? <laughs> a bunch of cops have parked outside of this abandoned derelict building and are shining a spotlight on it. As far as we know, we don't see any criminals in the window shooting back. They're not firing at anything. And uh, so it, it's almost just like, what's going on here? I don't get it. <laughs> Just um, not very dynamic. I don't know how many kids were going to see that cover in the late 40s and say, like, wow, I want to see what's going on inside. So the first story is the Machine Gun Mad Mobsters. It's quite a mouthful there. And we get another Al Feldstein drawn story. This one seems a little less wonky than last issue's story that he drew. I, don't, I wonder if they told him to tone it down a little. But it's still uh, pretty... Um, obviously Al Feldstein, you know, his style. And uh, this one is basically just a, about a gang war between the Raylos and the Boardwalk Busters. They're rival gangs in a, in a coastal city, it says. So for some reason, they felt the need to protect the identity of this city. And I don't know why. Um, so basically, we just see this escalating crime war. Or gang war, I should say. You know, one, uh, the Relos attack the Busters and uh, start muscling in on their territory. The, they, the other gang retaliates. The other gang retaliates even stronger and it just keeps building. But here's an interesting thing is, uh, I don't know if maybe these comics weren't selling as well as EC hoped, but look at this. This is very different than the past issues. They're really throwing in the headlights. That was actually a term back then in the Golden Age, headlight comics. And those were the comics that, like, Frederick Wortham was really bothered by. And the kind of puritanical people who wanted to put comics out of business. Because uh, they started, like, really uh, accentuating the pulchritude of some of these women in comics. You know, like, Sheena, Queen of the Jungle. Um, I mean, that was usable stuff for a kid back then. You couldn't get your hands on porn. Some of these comics had some, uh, you know, it was bathroom reading material. But Al Feldstein was a, a master of the drawing the hugely prominent breasts and also the wrinkles that go in between those breasts on a tight dress. He uh, had very distinctive uh, wrink, wrinkle drawing style when it came to cleavage. I don't know why I love this panel of this car <laughs> smushed against this lamppost. It looks like a very cartoony. So this witness of the crime, this woman runs away. And as the pages go uh, progress, we just see the, the gang war just keeps uh, intensifying. One gang steals the other gang's rum. So the other gang retaliates, kills a bunch of the other guys. Got more excuse to put some headlights in, showing the mob boss's uh, girlfriend. So this gang war gets so bloody that the authorities have to notice. You know, they can't, uh, they got to intervene. So they finally catch a break. The cops find one of the gang guys, uh, one of the boardwalk busters, with some illegal rum. And they take him down to the station. He says, I'm not I'm not squealing on anyone. So they're like, that's just fine. We got plenty of witnesses. And they find all these people who uh, can finger him. 
because they saw various crimes he's committed. And uh, so one by one, they get some of these uh, criminals behind bars. And then one day, uh, one of them cracks. He's like, let me out of here. I'll spill what I know. I can't stand it. And he tells them that there's going to be a big raid tomorrow night. A big gang war. So the cops go down and basically just shoot everyone dead, or most of them. It just looks like a massacre. I like this here. You'll never take me alive, copper. Then maybe I'll take you dead. And look at that panel. This is a very odd panel. So I guess the few remaining criminals alive are holed up in this place. They throw tear gas in. I love this panel of these guys crying. I would even guess that was Al Feldstein. It looks like a different artist, but it looks great. And they round them all up, and that's the end of the gang war. Like I said, not much of a story. This next one's weird. It's like uh, they were trying to create a, a continuing character. And for all I know, maybe he does continue in the next few issues of War Against Crime. I don't know yet. I don't want to look ahead. But, um, <laughs> sorry, this name is just ridiculous. Choo Choo Jones. I guess he was going to be this uh, continuing character. And it's kind of interesting because this is the first time uh, a hero has been the main character of a story in all of these stories so far. Uh, uh, a bad guy is uh, the main character. That's the whole point of these crime stories. So I guess that Choo Choo Jones works on the railroads. And uh, in the area where he works, there's this uh, crime queen named Diana Rage. That's a pretty cool name. And she's been um, causing all these train accidents through sabotage. And mainly uh, the trains of the Happy Valley Railroad Company. She's trying to put them out of business so she can step in and buy up the controlling stock at rock bottom prices. So we see her here and she's telling uh, two of her her thugs to, uh, the, 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 she tells them that the 309 train is about to leave, so they better hurry so they can uh, sabotage it. Meanwhile, we see the offices of the Happy Valley Railroad Company, and one of their main clients is uh, saying, you guys have too many accidents, too many delays. One more delay, and I'm pulling my business and bringing it elsewhere. You know, I'm sorry, I totally forgot to mention, this is a, this is art by Sheldon Moldoff, the uh, Golden Age cartoonist. I, I think he drew, like, the first Hawkman, maybe even created, helped co-create Hawkman. Did a lot of stuff for DC. I think he was an editor there, even. So, um, very classic, you know, Golden Age cartoonist. I don't know if he was down on his luck working for EC then. But uh, he's got some interesting panels here. And uh, some of it's uh, pretty decent. So we see two of Diana Rage's goons. They've got machine guns. They wait for the train to pass, the 309, and they they gun down the the engineer and the fireman. The guy who shovels coal. And so meanwhile, Choo Choo Jones and his little buddy are working on the railroad. And they see the train come and they see that it went right through a, a stop sign, a stop signal. And Choo Choo Jones is like, something's wrong here. So he jumps on the moving train. And he makes his way up to the engine, finds the dead guys. See, there's one of those interesting panels. It's like really well drawn. But then you got shit like this. Look how bad that hand is. It's terrible. So he stops the train just in time. It was about to crash into another train on the same track. So he saves the day. And then he uh, wires a, uh, to the off main office. Says, hey, give me permission. I'm, I'll, I'll drive the train to the next destination. I want to ferret out these bad guys. I want to get to the bottom of this. So they give him the authority. He needs a fireman, though. So Diana Reeves just happens to be outside the office and says, tells one of her goons to pretend to be the fireman 
and tells the other goon to go to the bridge that they're about to uh, ride over and dynamite it. Man, look at that face on her. It's like almost clown-like makeup on her eyes. Really uh, kooky looking. So when he gets on the train, uh, Choo Choo sees the the thug who's pretending to be the fireman. And he says, are you the new Bakehead? No, I'm the new fireman. And then Choo Choo Jones thinks to himself, that's funny. Any railroad man knows that Bakehead means fireman. <laughs> I like that term, Bakehead. I want to start calling my friends who smoke pot. I'm going to start calling them Big Head. So uh, the train's pounding along, and uh, Diana Rage's goon makes his move and totally knocks out Choo Choo Jones. He tries to turn a jet of scalding steam on him, but luckily Choo Choo Jones... <laughs> Sorry, every time I say that name, it's hard not to laugh. Okay, Choo Choo Jones gets up just in time, and he gets the best of the goon. And uh, he's about to pound his face in. He's like, you better talk. And he says, the train, it's it's gonna, it's gonna, about to go over that bridge and we're gonna dynamite it. We'll all be blown to bits. And this just is totally beyond ludicrous what happens now. So we see the guy, he's about to dynamite the bridge as soon as the train comes over it. So the train is approaching the bridge here. Somehow, Choo Choo, jumps out of the train, runs ahead of it, shimmies down, and cuts the wire to the dynamite, all before this guy could just uh, plunge the lever. <laughs> it just doesn't make any sense. But whatever, it works, and he saves the day. And uh, he goes back to the main office to congratulate him. And this little caption tells us that Diana Rage and her entire gang were rounded up and swiftly, swiftly convicted of their crimes. So it's a happy ending, thanks to Choo Choo Jones. Letter page, two page short story for postal regulations. So this last story is called The Robbery Ring and it's drawn by this guy named Howard Larson who I don't never really saw before. I don't know much about him, but what I do know is this guy cannot draw hats at all. Look how bad these hats are drawn. They look like um, firemen's <laughs> helmets. Um, I think they're supposed to be like fedoras, um, you know, from like old time crime movies and shit. But man, throughout the story, you'll see they're just, it's terrible. I do like the splash page though. Very, uh, it's like a movie poster design. Kind of a striking image there. Kind of like that. So we see these criminals hanging out. These bad guys. And the boss of the gang sees an article. Duval to display King's Diamond. So apparently like half the cops in the city are going to be there. Because this is a hugely expensive diamond. And um, they don't want anyone to steal it. So... The whole police force is going to be diverted, or most of it, to, to the store. So the leader comes up with a good idea. He's just like, guys, we'll rob any other jewelry store in town. There probably will be no cops around, because they'll all be over at Duval's. I kind of like this guy's art. Some of the faces, it's like crude, but also kind of good. Like this guy's face right here. So they go to the ju this other jewelry store. <laughs> look at them in silhouette. Totally look like a bunch of firemen, right? God, that guy can't draw hats at all. So uh, the proprietor comes out. They pretend to be customers. They're like, hey, we want something really special from, you know, I want something really special for my girlfriend. So uh, he takes them back to the private showrooms. That's where they keep the fine jewelry. And uh, they're waiting for him to get back. And he comes back with this uh, security guard. He says, hope you'll pardon the guard. Just a little precaution. You understand. And the, the gang leader's like, sure, sure. So, you know, he still pretends. He's pretending he's a customer looking at rings. And then one of his thugs uh, comes up from behind and knocks the security guard out.
And then they knock out the proprietor and they take all the jewelry and go. When the guys wake up, they call the cops. They go down to the station and the cops are questioning them. Like, oh, can you give us any clues? Do you remember anything? Even the detectives are bad ads too. God, I, the colors in this are so rich. I'm not saying it's like a great color choice, but man, this is good printing. Look how good that blue is. What kind of a weird color scheme is blue and the red. And then finally, the, the proprietor of the store says, oh, it slipped my mind. I remember now he was wearing a very distinctive ring. And uh, he draws it for the cops. He says, this is what it looked like. It's kind of like a rattlesnake. A kind of tacky <laughs> ring to wear. So the cops are like, we'll just uh, send out all of our cops to just wander around looking for a guy wearing a rattlesnake ring. And I don't know really what's going on in this panel, but apparently they go to a brothel even. Tell all the girls there, like, hey, if you see this guy, give us a call. But I think it's just another excuse to show some, like, hot ladies to bolster the circulation. So, um, two days later, this detective's in a bar and he sees the gang leader. He sees the ring and the badly drawn hats. <laughs> and they nab him on the way out. He nabs him on the way out. And then they take him down to the station and the guy there's like, mighty appropriate, this little ring which led to your capture. A striking serpent and three vicious snakes. And that's the end. It's just such a nothing story. It's like, these guys committed a crime. There was a clue against them. And they found they found them and arrested them. I don't know. Um, it doesn't tell us who wrote these stories. But they're not very good. They're not very exciting or thrilling at all. But I do say... I, Hope I hope to see more of this Howard Larson fellow in the next few issues. So that's it, guys. War Against Crime number four. Hope you enjoyed it. And uh, I also hope to see you next time here at the Hercules Pettix Academy of Comic Book Studies.